This is Pat's Two Cents, reminding you that God's into love. We are talking about covenant. God is true to his covenant. He's true to his word, true to his promises. So now we are getting ready to read Psalms 105. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works that he had done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O oh, ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen, he is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He hath remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac, and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying, Unto thee will I give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance. Amen, amen, amen. Wow, I think about the promises he made to Abraham. I think about the promises he made to so many and the promises he made to us. We can stand on his promises, y'all. We really can. He is not, you know, he's he's not a truth breaker. He he doesn't break promises. He he's not uh he doesn't lie, he doesn't falsify his documents. He is he is true. True blue and dependable. And a lot of times, you know, when we don't know him like we'd like to, we're not really sure how true he is. But I am here to tell you from experience and from the word of God. God, when he tells the truth, when he makes a promise, you can stand on it. You can take it to the bank. He will not break covenant with you. We break covenant with him all the time. But he will not break covenant with you. So he is dependable. Be encouraged when things go bump in the night and things go cuckoo and you're wondering, why did this go wrong? Why did that fall through? How how come that failed? Yeah. Why did they lie on me? Whatever. It doesn't make God a lie. That's man. Mm -hmm. Let God be true and every man a lie. But God ain't the one. He ain't a man that he should lie. All right. We're going to go to Genesis real quick. So I want you to hear this. Genesis chapter 13. Now this is this is something. Sometimes when we have a promise getting ready to be realized, getting ready to come to fruition in our lives, sometimes there's a falling away first. There's a purging process that takes place. And we sometimes feel like we're suffering loss from friendships, from relationships, we're suffering loss from, from the norm, from things that are comfortable to us. We're losing our comfort zone. It's being pulled away, being pulled out of our lives, almost like a, a, an extraction. And, you know, anytime we, something's extracted out of our lives that we've grown accustomed to, I've grown accustomed to your face. We don't like the feeling. It's uncomfortable. It's, it makes things feel unsure, unstable. But God is true. Now listen to what happens. All right. Whatever he does is for our good. And Abraham went out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and Lot with him into the south. And Abram was very rich in cattle and silver and gold. And he went on his journeys from the south even to Bethel into the place where the tent, where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Hai, unto the place of the altar, which he had made there at first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. And Lot also, which went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. And the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together. 
for their substance was great, so they could not dwell together. And there was a strife between the herdsmen of Abraham's cattle and the herdsmen of Lot's cattle. Now, let me stop right there before I finish that sentence. Sometimes one of the signs that God's getting ready to remove you, mm -hmm, he's going to do it. There sometimes comes a strife or tension between you and others. And it becomes uncomfortable for you to stay. And it's God's way of showing you, I'm getting ready to remove you and relocate you. Mm -hmm. So it's a good time to pray when you see a lot of strife, a lot of unrest starting to come up in, in relationships where you are. All right, now listen to this. Yeah, don't get your feelings hurt. Know that God's working something. See, he sends the, the, the devil to do his dirty work. Okay. Now, and there was a strife between the herdsmen of Abram's cattle and herdsmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelled there in the land. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdsmen and thy herdsmen, for we are brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. And if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zoar. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves, the one from the other. Check this out. All right. Check out what happens now. Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent towards Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Okay. And the Lord said unto Abram after that Lot was separated, Lift up now thine eyes, check this out, check this out, y'all, and look from the place where thou art, northward and southward and eastward and westward, for all the land which thou seest. What do you see? What do you see? What's in your mind's eye? Okay. All the land which thou seest to thee. Will I give it and to thy seed forever? And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if man can number the dust of the earth, that then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Ah, 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 ah. He built an altar before the Lord after that. That's the end of the chapter, the next verse, built an altar. Now, there are times when you have to ask God to open up your vision, expand your vision, your, your visual ability, so that you can envision something you've never had before. Open your eyes, raise your sights, lengthen your reach. And let your mind flow throughout all of the blessings that you'd like to get from God. Mm -hmm. And then sit down and get explicit with God and let him know all that you'd like to have. I'm not talking materialism like he's a sugar daddy or Santa Claus. But there are times and seasons in our lives when we have the pick of the litter because God has put us in a season of receiving of his blessings. So that is the time to go on and get greedy. You're never being greedy with God when he's ready to bless you. But he'll put the hamper, he'll stop it when you've had enough. Everybody has their limits based on their developmental stage, how much they can handle. If you can't handle a lot, you won't get a lot. 
If you can handle a little bit, you'll get as much of that little bit as you can. But be specific. Tell the colors, the textures, the size. Be specific. Don't be afraid. God's not poor. You hear what I'm saying? If, if he's poised to bless you, you be poised to receive. You let your imagination go wild. What did God tell Abraham? Look out there. Far as your eyes can see. How far, I ask you, can your eyes see? How far can you imagine? What all, all the things in your life that you can possibly imagine happening for you in ministry, in giftings and callings, your, your, uh, your financial situation, your social situation, how much clout and power can you have to affect the government? How much can you do to change lives? What all can God do with you? What are you willing to submit to him so that the sky is the limit? And then God removes even the sky and takes off all limits for you. How far can you see? Can you see it? Can you see it? Close your eyes and imagine. President of the United States an ambassador for the nations. Someone that changes the laws of the land. Can you see it? Can you see that mansion that God's going to use for ministry? Can you see that form of transportation? Can you see your life with a professional driver driving you everywhere you need to go so you can concentrate on what you need to do while you're traveling from hither to yarn while you're doing God's work. Can you picture all that God can give you? Can you picture the healing, the self-confidence, the boldness, the new level of anointing? Can you picture yourself singing or preaching or teaching on TV? Can you picture how far can your eyes see? Can you picture yourself owning acres of land with all kinds of houses on it, having a retreat to minister to God's people? Can, how far can you see? See, whatever I've named to you, I can picture it. Not because I'm all that in a bag of chips, because baby cakes, I live with me. I'm not. I know it. I'm the first to tell you, but God is. God is the joy and the strength of my life. He moves all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to keep me, never to leave me. He's never, never come short of his word. I've got to fast and pray, stay in the narrow way. And keep my life clean every day. Ah, I'm not going to keep going. My point is, God is an answer to all your dreams. God is the fulfillment of all those promises. But you must open your eyes and allow yourself to imagine, to see, to hope, to dream, and reach for it. Ask questions, investigate every, every possibility. Don't just sit there and shake your head and say, oh, I know that's not for me. <laughs> no, not for me. Because see, then you're looking at you. If you look at you, ain't none of it for you. But don't look at you. When Peter looked at Jesus and not on him, when Peter looked at Jesus and not on the waves, the wind, the storm, the lightning. Hmm. When Peter looked at Jesus, he did the impossible. He walked on water. Every one of you in this group, God's church of love, can walk on water. Every one of you. Any of you can be president of the United States.
any of you can 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 own land. You can own whatever it takes. I remember a couple that that bought property up in um Idlewild. They're using it as a retreat for God's people to be ministered to. Acres and acres and acres of land. They did it. They did it. They used their home somewhere in Bel Air, some not Bel Air, where was it? It was in a Diamond Bar. It's the same as Bel Air, basically. It was a couple, a millionaire couple. They used their home. They had their indoor handball court right there in their house and welcomed God's people and administered healing and vision and all kind of stuff. Al and Hattie Hollingsworth, they have ministered to God's people for years and still doing so because they had vision way bigger than themselves. They were looking at God not itself. They were looking at their limitless God rather than their limitations. What are you looking at? What are you looking at? It's all within reach if you're focused on God. Don't focus on the setbacks. Don't focus on the lies. You don't know I'm preaching to myself right now. Because I had a whole lot of reason to get disappointed this week. And God keeps reminding me, focus on him. That's the source of my blessing, not man, not the lending institutions. Hmm. God. God is the joy and the strength of my life. He moves all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to keep me, never to leave me. He's never, never fallen short of his word. I've got to fast and pray. Stay in the narrow way. Keep my light clean every day. I want to be with him when he comes back. I've come too far and hopefully I'll never turn back. God is. And for you who believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And he will reward you for diligently seeking him, seeking his word, seeking his way. Seek the Lord and his strength evermore. The sky is the limit. Outer space is the limit. There is no box. <laughs> the only thing that could hinder you is you. Not the devil, not your credit rating, not your position in society, not your knowledge or your lack of knowledge. No, God. You look through the eyes of God and you will see things you never saw before. You will see possibilities you never saw before. You have no idea what God has in store for you. God knows the plans he has for you. Plans to bless you and not harm you. Plans to give you an expected end, a hope, and a future. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. I just feel like for God to reinforce his covenant, we ought to be jumping up and down shouting for joy because you have to remember when there's unity in the body, the God takes the leader and whatever he blesses the leader with the anointing and all the blessings, the oil runs down like it did on Aaron's head and it runs down his face onto his beard and it continues to run down. It's a symbolism of the whole body being drenched in the blessings of the anointing. Trust me, if God continues to bless me and we all remain one in unity, 
God will continue to bless you as well. It's not, these blessings are not just for me. I'm always asking God, is there a way that you can finance my vision so much that even if none of our group can afford for us to get together, I can pay for it. Somebody in the group would join us that has all the money, that doesn't need any money, a professional basketball player with billions of dollars would just say, hey, we want to get this together. I'll get my manager to arrange it and we'll all meet. And you guys tell me your address and all that and I'll get you tickets and, and we'll all have it all set up. All you got to do is go to the airport, pick up your ticket and go. See, that's the kind of miraculous power I expect from God. What we don't have the money to do, God can make it happen. If you don't have the wherewithal to get the blessing, God can get the blessing to you because God is a promise keeper. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. So remember, when God tells you to look as far as your eyes can see, the land is before you. As far as your eyes can see, y'all, open your eyes and see as far as you can. Let your imagination run wild. He will do exceedingly, exceedingly, I'm repeating it, exceedingly, abundantly, above, not below, above, all, not some, all that you could ask or think. How far can your mind take you? According to the power that works within us. You believe it? He'll do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ask or think. Think it, baby. According to the power that works within us. The power you have to focus, the power you have to believe. Because when God sets a covenant before you, he is true to his covenant. Mm. Father, I bless and praise your name for being a true promise keeper. Thank you, Lord, that you're not a man that you should lie. Thank you for not being a truth breaker. Thank you, Father. I bless your name. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Father. Mm. Okay, let me look at one more here. Wow. Oh, yeah. Remember when he challenged Abram to sacrifice his son and he took his son up the hill? Knowing that God had to have another, another plan comes from the ram in the bush. And what did God do right after that? He started quoting his promise and his covenant. And I want you to hear it. Okay. And he said, lay not thine hand upon the lad, verse 12, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son from me. Now listen, this is chapter Genesis chapter 22. All right. Okay. And that was verse 12. We're reading on from there. And Abram lifted up his eyes and looked and beheld behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. Hmm. And Abram went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in, instead of his son. And Abram called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. And it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. Break it down to everyday English, Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Listen, and Abram called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, and it was said in that day, the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abram out of heaven the second time and said, by myself have I sworn. Now, you know, God is not in the swearing business. 
but he meant it when he tells you I'm swearing to it. Wow. By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and has not withheld thy son, thine only son, and I pray that there is nothing in your life you would ever withhold, that God would always come first, even if you have to break off a relationship, quit a job, leave your family, whatever, make sure God is always first in your life. This is the blessing. That in blessing, verse 17, I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sands which is upon the seashore and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Mm. And in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. When God gives you a promise, baby, it stands. He will command his covenant to perform it. His word will not return unto him void, but it will accomplish what he set it out to do. Basic English. God bless you. Be encouraged. Standing on the promises of God. You ever hear that old song that, that your grandma sang? Yeah, I know I'm old enough to be a grandma. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. God bless you as you stand on his promises with me. Amen. Mm -hmm.